Hi, my name is Serene Ong and I'm a research fellow at the Centre for Biomedical Ethics at the National University of Singapore. In the previous video, we talked about the patient's dilemma regarding the familial disclosure of genetic risk. This final video will look at another ethical dilemma, this time from the clinician's point of view. If a patient refuses to disclose genetic risk information to at-risk relatives, the clinician may face a conflict between non-maleficence and breaching the patient's confidentiality. We will work through this scenario using an example from a recent 2020 case in the UK. The case, ABC versus St. George Healthcare and others, concerned the need to protect the confidentiality of the patient's health information against the public interest in preventing serious harm to others. It raises the stark conflict of, between a patient who had explicitly refused for confidential information to be disclosed to his daughter and the interest of the daughter in knowing that she may have inherited a severe genetic condition. The case is important as there is currently no legal or professional duty uh, in the UK to warn family members of their potential risk of suffering from hereditary conditions. The outcome is of interest to other countries that follow the English common law, such as Singapore. The identities of the daughter and father in the case are not known, but they were respectively referred to as ABC and XX in the judgment. In 2007, XX was convicted of manslaughter because he shot and killed ABC's mother. He was detained under the UK's Men Mental Health Act at Springfield Hospital. Both ABC and XX participated in family therapy offered by the hospital. In 2009, XX was diagnosed with Huntington's disease, a progressive neurological condition that is incurable and fatal. It is autosomal dominant, which meant his children had a 50% chance of developing HD. At the same time XX was diagnosed, ABC told her father that she was pregnant. XX clinicians had advised him on multiple occasions to inform ABC and her sister, but XX refused to disclose. He said that he did not want his daughters to know about it, as his daughters might get upset, kill themselves, or have an abortion. The multidisciplinary team considered whether they should breach the patient's right to confidentiality because of the substantial implications for his daughters, but eventually decided not to. ABC gave birth in April 2020, 2010. In August 2010, XX attending clinician accidentally informed ABC of her father's HD diagnosis. In January 2013, ABC tested positive for HD. The disease status of her child is unknown. ABC then brought a claim against various national health services trusts involved in excess treatment on the basis that she was owed a duty of care by her father's clinicians, the defendants. She argued that had she known of her, fa her father's diagnosis, she would have sought testing, and if she had tested positive for HD, she would have had an abortion. ABC contended that her pregnancy made the issue of disclosure critical, particularly as she would be a single parent at the time of her father's diagnosis, and that the harm to her was foreseeable. Moreover, a child, if born to a parent who tested positive for HD, will have a 50% probability of developing HD. ABC was deeply concerned for her child's future, as she is a single parent. She felt that it was unfair for her to bring a child into the world under such, such circumstances, and was distressed that she did not have the opportunity to make that choice. For the purpose of this exercise, there are two ways to analyse the case. The first is through a legal, legal perspective, and the second is through a moral perspective. It was a fairly long and complex case, and the claim was ultimately dismissed. Of interest here was that a novel duty of care in negligence was created. The crux of the legal case was whether the defendant the defendants owed a duty of care to the claimant. Courts have agreed that clinicians may owe a duty of care to people other than their patient, 
but such a duty is only capable of arising when there is a close proximal relationship between the claimant and the defendant. There was no relation, such relationship between XX care team and ABC. However, as ABC was attending therapy at Springfield Hospital, the hospital was found to owe her a duty of care in negligence. There were three prongs to this test. One, there was clear foreseeable harm to ABC. In other words, psychological harm and the loss of opportunity to terminate her pregnancy. Second, the relationship between ABC and Springfield Hospital was sufficiently proximate. This relationship meant that the hospital was aware of ABC's circumstances and had the means to disclose a father's diagnosis to her. The hospital owed ABC a duty of care as a patient, but that duty did not extend to releasing, her, his confident, to, releasing to her confidential information about another patient. 3. This duty of care was not a duty to disclose confidential information when a patient had refused consent. Rather, it was a duty to balance the interests of ABC against the interests of XX. There would only be a breach of duty if the balancing exercise was not conducted properly. Therefore, if there was a close proximal relationship involved, there would be a duty to conduct a balancing exercise of the interests of the individual concerned against those of the patient, an exercise which may or may not lead to disclosure. Justice Yip, who uh, heard the case, emphasized that the novel duty is not a freestanding duty of disclosure and that there, was no, there is no broad duty of care towards all relatives. Rather, the duty arose on the particular facts of the case, which involved a close proximal relationship between ABC and Springfield Hospital and the foresight that ABC might suffer harm if not inf informed. Justice Yip highlighted that professional guidance and pro established legal authorities acknowledge that the duty of confidentiality is not absolute and necessitates a balancing act. Moreover, clinicians are granted significant leeway in this balancing process by the courts. The conclusion of ABC did not set different standards in the future regarding clinicians' duty of care to relatives. It did not create a general duty owed by healthcare professionals to anyone who was not their patient, nor would the duty require healthcare uh, professionals such as doctors to, chase down, to trace the genetic relatives of their patient. The case presents a specific example of a broader moral conflict between respecting the patient's autonomy and confidentiality and the well-being of family members. Due to the sensitive and confidential nature of genetic information, clinicians are usually not allowed to disclose the information to relatives without explicit, explicit consent from patients. If the patients did not wish to, does not wish to inform their family members, it may be necessary to balance respect for patients' confidentiality against the interests of family members for whom the information could affect decision-making about their health or reproductive choices. There are no general rules to deal with this dilemma. Rather, each case must be evaluated with the inclusion of all relevant facts. Confidentiality is a cornerstone of the medical system and commonly justified by two principles. The first is respect for patient autonomy. Patients should have control over the information they share in confidence with clinicians. The second is trust. Breaching confidentiality can undermine trust in the clinician-patient relationship. Patients may feel reluctant to disclose freely with their um, clinician or even seek treatment if this trust is broken. As a result, they, there are very strict standards for breaching medical confidentiality. Clinicians are typically quite cautious about breaching confidentiality. For example, a 20, uh, 2003 survey of 800 geneticists showed that only 25% would be willing to disclose to the patient's family, even if the risk to the family member was high. 
and only four respondents out of 800 actually did so. The default position, therefore, is to maintain patient confidentiality unless it is justified in the public interest. The onus is therefore on the party advocating disclosure to prove public interest. While confidentiality is a crucial principle in healthcare, it should not be viewed as absolute when it conflicts with the potential for severe harm to others. Professional guidance advise healthcare providers such as clinicians to exercise their professional judgment and assess whether disclosing certain genetic risk information could prevent serious harm to family members. Admittedly, this advice and what comprises serious harm can be somewhat vague. Even though the defendants recognise the foreseeable harm to ABC as a single pregnant person, they chose not to disclose. Currently, there is no legal basis for setting aside this duty of confidentiality in order to disclose genetic risk information to relatives. The absence of a clear legal provision in this regard may cause healthcare professionals to feel uncertain about exercising discretion to disclose. Indeed, in the survey of 800 geneticists, the respondents cited patient confidentiality, eventual case re resolution by other means, and legal liability as the major factors leading to non-disclosure. However, the creation of a duty to consider the interests of genetic relatives could provide that legal basis to breach confidentiality if the balancing exercise concludes in an obligation to disclose. With increases in the use of genetic testing as part of standard clinical care, moral tensions in familial disclosure of genetic risk information are likely to become more common. When such tensions are not resolved satisfactorily in the clinical setting, they are then escalated to the courts. But the ABC case represents a very rare confluence of conflicting elements that occurred within a tight time frame. Healthcare providers such as clinicians, geneticists or genetic counsellors often do not have direct contact with at-risk family members. It would be impractical and inappropriate to impose such a duty on clinicians to trace and inform at-risk relatives. It is also very rare for clinicians to encounter a situation where they need to consider breaching patient confidentiality, as these cases can often be resolved with counselling. The widespread application of genetic testing will require us to think carefully about the ethical, legal and social ramifications particularly how the genetic information obtained from an individual could profoundly affect the health and well-being of related others. As we explore the capabilities of genetic testing, it is also equally important to recognise its limitations and what it cannot accomplish. Thank you.